Hi there, it's Becky. Um, this is my first video as part of Hungry for Change, and um, so yeah, I'm Becky Rebecca Fleming. Um, apologies, I was just about to just like run in the shower and just like get rid of this hair mask. I put it on and I was like, oh my goodness, I've not done the video. So yeah, so I'm just gonna like hopefully it's not too rushed, but yeah. So basically, this video is about the last week the sudden rise in media coverage um upon eating disorders like there was an article in the daily mail surrounding children um which is free developing um anorexia and how they've received treatment for it i'll go into that later and then the that documentary is part of this tonight segment on itv called dying to be thin um yeah so Firstly, I'll start speaking about the the document, no, no, the um, article in Daily Mail. Um, now, f for those who haven't like seen the article, I'm pretty sure most of you would have seen it because it was we, we, there was like a whole thread in it on the Hungry for Change group. But for those of you who haven't, um, I'll pop the link in the info section. Um, but yeah, basically the whole article was about young children developing eating disorders um, and the title was young children as young as three um, and it was quite dubious because it there was only one case of a three year old um, and then the, yeah the article had only managed to pick up actually one case and then made a whole article about it um, and obviously the whole sensationalising it wants to make a huge headline um, now I have made an opinion on it um, at three years old I, when I was three I can't even really remember when I was three years old but kids are just like learning to talk um, and you eat at that age um, obviously this, you get you get fussy eaters and, but fuss, fussiness cannot be like Translated into a fully blown eating disorder, anorexia, eating, bulimia, BED, every, they're all incredibly complex illnesses, and I just find it incredibly hard to fathom how a three year old can be able to develop this and have the same thoughts, feelings, the same mindset as someone who is actually suffering. You know, it just seems is it even possible? Um, now I'm not saying that this is just my opinion now there, there may be like I just I just find it really hard to think how can a, a three year old be like have, it's just it's just um, the media just trying to like hold, fully blow it out of proportion they picked up on one case one actual case all the other cases were like 7 to 10 year olds which is that's more normal but then they've just been like oh yeah three year olds when one case no um i just i think you know you you just you just learn to talk and everything is like a playground you know you're just so happy and it just, I actually can't get my head around it, like how can, is the three year old having the same mentality as like 11 year old, 12, you know, do they even like, they don't even know the concept of stuff <laughs> and it's just like, you know, they'll go play out, food, sleep, um, cartoons, they don't really do things purposely, like they won't throw away their food um, or refuse to eat purposely. Now, like I've said, you know, there's, there can be extreme fussiness and maybe later on that fussiness can be developed into an eating disorder, but this just seems like plain fussiness to me and parents are obviously just too. 
can't think of the word. They're just, oh, they've got needs, so no. It's pretty normal for PCOS. It's just, it's such a complex illness. You can't just go around just throwing the, the word around or diagnosing everybody here and there and everywhere. Um, and then for the doctors, nurses, whatever, blaming like the ideal to conform and perfect celebrity, perfect body image. Are children at youngest three even aware of that? I mean, if they are, then who's to blame? Is it their parents? Because if they were going to read a magazine, they wouldn't be able to read it, they'd only be able to see the pictures. And now, who would they get the magazine from? So, I don't know. These are just thoughts going around in my head. Um, so, moving on to the, the documentary that was on, it was on the first day last week at half seven, I'm part of the Tonight segment. Um, uh, yeah. So this is like the show was document the, the, the documentary was like showcasing eating disorders in young children and there was like a part of it where they were questioning children like from seven upwards and they had like their their body shapes had the normal shape in them. Two thinner ones and then two larger ones. And even at younger seven, these like young girls were so fully aware of their body image and the woman, um, Fiona Foster, she she said it was like, well, how would you feel being one, one being the um, the smallest, and then was it five? Five was the biggest, and obviously the biggest was like bad, bullying, teasing, and then one would be oh like they'd be happier because they're the smallest. Um, I found that really like it's quite worrying like how. These young, like these seven year olds can think that and it's the fact that they would, that like oh number one thin would make me happy and being large would lead to bullying and unhappiness and what like quoting them it was like it was a bad thing. Um, as a whole it's really worrying and To think and um, that that can at seven years old, um, they think that now, um, at 11, 12, 13, onwards and upwards, what will be happening there? And then obviously, they brought in like, what it, they think they brought in 11 and was it, yeah, 11 and 12 year olds, and they all thought the thing, thought to say the same thing, like. It was all like the whole the same consensus was number one thin would make me happy and number five largest is unhappy. Hmm. Um I don't know what to think of that because it's just we just live in a world where we just where being thin is just like praised upon. And then being large is almost seen as just an extremely bad thing. Whereas it's just like, why can't you just be, I don't know, sometimes you just want to just shake their heads and be like, please just be happy. I'm waffling. Um, so, aside from like the Trona body shapes and comparing them. They also showed um, a teenager in a specialised eating disorder centre and on her path to recovery and her thoughts and feelings and then another girl who was in another centre. Um, so do you see the patterns here? It's all girls and it's all anorexia. Now I do think it was like it was good because because we spoke about it on the Hunger for Change thread, like how there was no, um, God, what am I? There was no, there 
was no use of like like usually they show they tell you about the weights, the calories, triggering materials, like all the triggering materials is easily displayed and accessible, like it was in the article. However, in this in this documentary, um it's like a massive shift. Um it was different. There was like no slide shots of the typical bikini shots at their lowest weights and there was like no talks of like what they ate, their weight, the eyes, all that. Um, which I think is really different because like when you look at like programs like Super Size vs Super Skinny and all the other typical food for like there's one of the ones I can't re remember but like most of them, especially in the articles, they're all they're all easy accessible. So I thought that was like a massive change and that was like the only thing I really I personally liked about it. Um so yeah. I was kinda of going off on a tangent there. The Yeah. It was all girls, all anorexia. And just a oh so similar stereotypes. You know, it's not just teenage girls and it's not just anorexia nervosa. Men, boys, they're just as much affected. However, like you never see this portrayed in the media. And Ednos, B B E D, um, bulimia, like are these eating disorders ever featured in documentaries, articles, just as much as anorexia? It's not people don't know the actual truth, the actual reality behind eating disorders. They only know what is featured in these documentaries. Um, and that's why they think because of shows like this, you can only suffer if you're a teenage girl, severely underweight, emaciated, and have like massive fair food and it's just like when will they start like writing making videos um from the other end of the spectrum they do exist and they need to be documented just as much as anorexia um ultimately they are all eating disorders and you know you can just imagine someone watching the show um i know suffering with bed bulimia ednos um and a, and a teenage boy and thinking oh well i don't have an eating disorder mine obviously isn't more needed to be treated I'm okay and it's like well no it's not because it, it's just as bad it's just the same and it's just my opinion um I don't know hopefully something more positive will come soon like a different like a more realistic documentary, a more realistic art article. But I can't hold my heart, my breath. Anyway, this is just going on a bit. And I'm really sorry if I've bored you. I really am. Um yeah. So that is it and yeah. Thank you if you watched this all because it was quite possibly, yeah.